Uh, One Night was announced back in November, six months ago, and uh, sold out, as you heard Mick say, in about 40 seconds. Nine more were added. It is the world premiere tomorrow, Monty Python live, mostly one down and five to go. Uh, The news coming out of here today is that new tickets for all the shows go on sale tomorrow, and the last night of the Pythons, which will be on July the 20th, the final show, uh, that's going to be shown in cinemas all over the UK. In fact, 570 cinemas, 1,800 worldwide, and also on the Gold Television Channel as well. Monty Python sings again. The uh, album has been released, uh, re-released again today, and Monty Python's Total Rubbish, a complete collection of all nine albums and a fan club probably going to be the worst run run fan club in the world that is also launched today. You'll find all that in your press releases, really. I'm sure it's all there. So the the boys, the men are here. Please welcome on stage John Cleese, Terry Gilliam, Eric Idle, Terry Jones, and Michael Palin. Monty Python flies again. John's taken the hostage. Morning. One direction have really let themselves go, haven't they? This is the best house since Bruce Forsyth. So we'll start, I'll ask a few questions and uh, then we'll throw it open to you. We have plenty of time. Uh, hopefully everybody will get their, uh, their question in. Um, so the, the video we saw then, uh, gentlemen, that was from a dress rehearsal, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Friday I night's that, dress rehearsal. It? Oh. Yes. Oh Not the good one, the bad one. Mm. Yeah. I haven't seen any of the dress rehearsals. Anyway, mm-hmm. good. Were yes, there, that was from Friday. We've done yeah. two public dress rehearsals already with um, the real, the, the, the size set that we're going to use at O2 replicated up in North London. And we had an audience of about, what, 300 people watching this, uh, us sort of rehearsing on this vast set, which is going to be the one at O2. So it was rather odd, you know, because it's going to be 14,000. 700 more people uh, watching it at O2. You're supposed to get off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We've got oh. merchandise. Yeah, oh, yeah, we've got yeah. merchandise just arrived, hot off the presses. Let's keep this here just to keep it interesting. So, as you said, it's a show for 1,400 people. Uh, I think the last time you performed together was the, the Hollywood Bowl, wasn't it? Uh, well, it's more like 15,000 people. Yeah, actually. yeah. Did I say 1,400? Yeah. Um, what did I say? 1,400. Holly- but the Hollywood Bowl, we did 8,000. Uh, because it, the Hollywood Bowl takes 16, we cut it in half. Um, and so so you, really, they bring the trees down. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Mike Burnham, <laughs> yes, yes. comes to dance a name. Yeah. And we did four nights of that, and that was 1980, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's um, right. And that was very, I enjoyed that. It was, it was nice, good fun. It? It's yeah. nice doing it in the open air. Python's yeah. good. In so we decided air. every 33 years we'll do it again. Everybody yes. was... All yes. the audience was. So, if you want tickets for 19, whenever it is. No, <laughs> All the audience were smoking marijuana. So, you, yes. you, yeah. <laughs> when we, uh, uh, John and I went into the audience, um, we got, uh, we, we <laughs> came out pretty high. <laughs> yeah. What drugs are going to be available at O2 to yeah, have? Right? Crack cocaine, I think. Viagra. Yeah. Yeah. Viagra. Yeah. That's what we've been We've got some Viagra in our dressing rooms. That's, That's where the true. money really is, not in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we saw some favourites up there. The Parrot Sketch ended it, um, and the Four Yorkshire Gentlemen as well. New material, I think, is what a lot of fans are looking forward to seeing. Um, what's, what's it been like writing together again? Well, actually, we've done things, uh, the Spanish Inquisition, we've never done on stage before. Um, and um, what's Well, it? the news, the, it's, yes, it's more like new to the audience. I mean, we do, what happened was that after the Hollywood Bowl, we did The Meaning of Life. So none of that stuff has ever been seen. We've never done that publicly. And so we do a few of that. And we've added a lot, yes. of, we've added a lot of songs and music to it. And in fact, we sort of brought back a musical review, which is what used to be some, a form in the 50s. And nobody's ever done it since, probably for very good reason. <laughs> so, uh, but it works quite nicely because it means that when we do a sketch, then there's a song, will, a Python song will break out. And it, it, I have to say, it's pretty filthy, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's pretty it's very disgusting. I'm happy and proud to say it's actually rather filthy. It's very medical. My four-and-a-half-year-old daughter is coming to the last show, and 
I, <laughs> I dread to think what she thinks about it. <laughs> we do have an age limit, don't we? Is it 16 or 18? We warn people. There's an advisory. We have to do now. So four and a half, pretty under the bar. Four and a half is the, yeah. is the yeah. age we put on the program, I think. <laughs> Don't tell the police, sort of Terry. But the main point to make is that it's much more uh, complicated and I suppose spectacular than, than mm. certainly yeah. I realised when we sat down for the read-through the first time, because Eric's done a wonderful job, brought in a lot of musical stuff using his spam -a -lot experience, and so the show is much bigger. In fact, I was just talking to our one of the producers who told me that it, the show itself it costs four and a half million pounds which is quite a big figure for example it's pretty much what the queen yeah. group uh, what queen group is uh, spending on on their shows and they're doing 40 shows that's and that's about the cost gone. of their show so we're not entirely doing it for the money yeah and uh, i think one should say that arlene phillips is doing the choreography and she's yeah. just absolutely fabulous so we got some very hot boys and girls on the stage, because yeah. it's important to have some rather more attractive people on yeah. stage with us. And youth. youth. And youth and a lot of energy. And young, she, did the, she did the choreography of The Meaning of Life. So mm. she, um, it's rather lovely for her to come back and work with us again after all these years. Yeah, and she's terrific. Yeah, that's some great stuff. Well, because I don't think you all wrote together. It, it you, hasn't you wrote been on. like that. That mm. process hasn't been like that. I mean, it's something that I, I, we, I, we talked about in, and, uh, I asked everybody what they wanted to do, what was their favorite sketch, or what to, to do on the last time out, what do you want to do? And they gave me a list yeah. of things, and I went away and assembled things, and then we got back together and read it, and criticized it, and did it again, and then it's been sort of evolving, because... Um, well, I mean, I, we did think that we should do the classics. I mean, people are going to want to see the, the, the yeah. sketches that they all talk about. So that wasn't a question of writing new material, it was just sort of fitting in the good old material into a nice new format with, as I say, the dancers and the production, all that, and give us a chance to change and... and with know, with a lot of stuff that we haven't actually previously done on stage, too, yeah. that, that, that never got, that sort of got overlooked and had never been done. So that's kind of fun for us to do, so it yeah. made it a bit what scary. Are the, what other sketches will be done? Well, I'm not doing... You know, it's a secret, isn't it? Is oh. it a secret oh. or not? <laughs> if I say the I'm about to reveal. Anne Elk's in there. Oh, whoops, Sorry. whoops. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right, we've never done that on stage, and that's um, fun to do. Yes. I, th I think the whole thing, the show doesn't feel anything like the original show to me. No, that's right. I mean, it's, it's quite, quite extraordinary. Different. I mean, it really is a very high-powered, energetic show, especially for 70-year-old 70 70 -year men. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's what's amazing. I think the most interesting thing is the backstage. If any of you get a chance to watch the back backstage show, it's quite extraordinary. People at this age moving at the speed which we're capable of. It's quite extraordinary yeah. to get into these various <laughs> outfits as quickly as we do. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Choreograph. It's the big sets yeah. and there's big changes and yeah. enormous amounts of costumes. Yeah. So it's a colourful and, the, you know, big experience. Because I, I, the question was how to fill that arena, mm -hmm. you know, and I know stand-ups do it, but then they just, everybody's just watching television. There's one person, one mic, all watching television. But we wanted to give them something a bit more. You know, our motto has been leave them wanting less. But yeah. <laughs> uh, we did want to kind of add a lot of stuff and make it a big want, show and go out with a band. Yeah. I mean, we want to be energetic. I mean, the opening number is quite energetic. We leap around and all that, and that kind of sets the standard. I'm quite worn out even after the first, you know, first number. <laughs> but uh, throughout that, you know, we've got like Mick Jagger to sort of we've got to take yes. that example that we can still move fast around the uh, stage. So a kind of slight madness takes over. You can just leap about at certain points. Well, I do. Yes, it's the next day you realize what you've done yeah. to exactly. your body <laughs> yes. and to others. So when the first show was announced, just one went on sale, that just sold very quickly. Um, how much persuading did you need to add nine more shows, which is well, which I quite think grueling? What happened was I, was I was working with Arlene and John Dupre, who's the musical conductor. We have an orchestra, you know, it's lovely. It's a full review. We have an orchestra and girls and boys and singers and dancers and sets and costumes. And we were working on it, and the phone rang, and they said, it was Holly, uh, Terry's daughter. And she said, we just sold out the first show in 44 seconds. And I said, oh, my gosh, so what happened? She said, well, Phil has put on another four, and they'd gone in the hour. So it was then to see whether they then came back and said, well, actually, we could get O2 another 10 days later. And I think that's what they then, we could yeah. do five more. 
And then the difficulty is that everybody thinks we're sold out. So we have to kind of explain to people, actually, we were sold out, but we're not anymore. So we do have a few seats. It's uh, part of, a, part of a, a tactic that we did to try to control the profits of the touts. But Michael, you understand it. You were explaining it to me. How does it work? What? The, the business of... <laughs> The, the business of oh, trying to, to do, oh, deal I, with I the tax. I'm not altogether clear, John. Just add a little bit. Anyone else know? <laughs> well, it's something anyway, to we do are with... anti touts pro yes. the common people. You started we, don't want, now. we don't want people to be ripped off. <laughs> no, the idea was that, that if, you could, if you could filter this stuff out slowly, the touts don't get the benefit. We kept the prices down so that people could afford to go. And then suddenly we discovered that, you know, a 92. Um, pound ticket is selling for several thousand quid, you've got to do something about it, and it's hard to control. But the way is to let these things go out slowly, and that's why we're having to tell you there are some yeah. seats available. Yeah. But if you, let them you out, if you let them out in stages, mm. then there's a constant, market's constantly being refreshed, and that means that we can keep some of the touts prices down a bit yeah. because well, there's other... Well, Tickets available. Why that was a great just explanation, Mike. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. But I'm a tout, you see, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the way you really make money out of this show, is to be a tout. No, I mean, I, I, I thought it was striking enough. I, uh, one show, and then someone said, oh, no, we're doing three. And then I heard we're doing five, because such a demand. And, and then I'd had to go up to Yorkshire for something. And I came back to London, and said, oh, we're doing ten. Yeah. Are you all right with that? <laughs> a little email comes around. So, yeah, that was, it really did race ahead. I said 10, that's probably But 10 enough. feels like the right number, doesn't it? I think it? it's good, yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I will ask one more question, then we'll put oh, yes, mics sorry. into... Hello. We're, we'll put <laughs> the microphones into uh, you guys so you can ask. I, I just wondered... One that. down, five to go, and there is a, a missing python. What do you think Graham Chapman would think about this if he were here? Well, you would rather enjoy it, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's good. He was very he good. he be backstage pulling some yeah. boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he got out just before you three took over. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have a clue what was going on. But yeah. <laughs> he's on screen, of well, course, and uh, in fact, he even sings the last number. So his presence is, is we obviously trying to make his presence noticeable in the show. So he's not totally absent. I mean, and he's certainly not forgotten. No. And listen, really, he's a very good, good actor, Gray. Very good stage actor. This one. Yeah. Slightly puzzled way of approaching everything. I mean, he was our leading man in yes, the life of right. Brian and in yeah. King, uh, the Holy leading. Grail. Um, he was our leading man, and we never knew it. <laughs> no, he's a very, very good actor, and he had. Yeah. He was stronger than any of us. You know, when he played uh, characters yeah. like the uh, the, blackets, the playwright, yeah. you know, or oh, the yeah, blackets. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got. Mm. A, he had a strength and a power that none yeah. of us have. But he was always late. <laughs> 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 that's the problem, he's never there. Yes, Strength right. and power, but he couldn't do Shakespeare, he'd arrive halfway through the third act. <laughs> oh, I'm King who? You're King Richard. Oh, oh I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, questions from the audience, and there are microphones. Um, we would like you to say uh, your name, who you represent, and uh, who your question is specifically for. So Whether you're married or not. No, sorry. Down in front, yes. <laughs> Hi there. Angela Bishop from Channel 10 Australia. Hi guys. Good day. Hi. 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 Hi there. And yes, we will be doing the Bruce's. Excellent. Yeah. Which might want to call me Bruce and be part of the family. Um, I understand, first of all, there might be a special guest joining you on stage during the Bruce sketches. Is that right? And secondly, is there any chance you will bring this wonderful show to Wollamaloo, to Australia? Uh, any chance at all? Well, we, yeah. We, we do have a guest in the Bruce's sketch, but that's actually because I think for charity, they've charity, auctioned off a Bruce. Ra people every raising day, money for charity. And some, some, some poor guy gets to come up and dress. And they're molested on stage. by a kangaroo. Oh, I don't want to give yes. it away. Sorry. Oh, dear. And that, that's for their chararity. And we might have a certain, as there might be, a, there's a sketch we've rewritten, which is quite nice, um, which has a, a potential celebrities in, depending on who turns up that yes. night. Will we go to. Australia? I, I don't think so. This is our last 10 shows, I'm afraid. I think the one on the 20th really is the last show, yeah. and I think we all feel very content with that. Now, yeah. we were not sure at one stage. I certainly thought it might be fun to go and do America, and the more I thought about it, I thought, I don't, I don't really want to. I think it's much better to try and do it once really well, 
in England where it started and just leave it at that? I think we've all got lots of other things we want to do. Well, I, mean, I know we have, really. I don't have anything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got an idea. So for I'll go to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You'll go to Australia. Like John, Australia. you've practically been living in Australia for most of this year. Well, I, I have to go somewhere in the winter. I mean, there are people who are prepared to live in Britain in the winter, and I admire them. I really do. Just 60 million people. I don't want to yeah. be one of them, that's all. So I went and sat in the Four Seasons in Sydney for four months and managed oh, to Oh, you were lucky. Yeah. Oh, I lucky. Yes. yes. We used to dream of living in the Four Seasons. write 45,000 words. So I I bet you had the air con on. It was probably just yeah. as cold as it was in London. It, it was lovely, and I learned to say Michael Clark. Very good. Okay. Very Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone over there? Over the other side, yeah? Pick anyone you like. Hi, uh, from uh, the Rolling Stones intro there. Does it seem, Eric, like you're putting together a rock reunion, putting together a, a, a set list with your songs and sketches? Well, there are many similarities. Obviously, if you go out and do a stadium uh, and you're going to look at your material, you, they want to see, they want to see the parrot. They, you know, they do want to see certain. Let's spend the night together. You know, they, they actually do. And it would be folly to try and write better things than our best at this age. It would be stupid. So. You know, we've changed it up and put some surprises in. There's a little bit of filming and some guests, a couple of really interesting guest stars, which I'm going to just tease you with. Um, uh, can I say that? Yeah, I, Stephen I Hawking is actually in the show. But yeah. I think and I'm he's really coming to it too, so he's a big Python fan. So he, he was asked if he would, and he said within one minute, yes. Yeah. So, but there's uh, a lot of there's a lot of music in it. Good, very good music. I mean, our version of Brown band. Sugar is far better than the one Mickey <laughs> yeah. and those guys do. <laughs> well, you, the big thing to get across to people is it's not a theatrical show in the sense of a sort of show that you could put on in a theatre like this. It would now be too big for this. It's nothing like the theatrical show we did when we toured mm. in seventy. Three, 73, mm. I think. Mm. So it's a quite different show, and it's it's somewhere between a theatrical show and a rock show, I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. A throck show. <laughs> Thank you. A question over here. Gentleman with his hand up. Throck show. Uh, hi, I'm Neil Smith from the BBC News website. Um, it says, uh, uh, it says that um, in, 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 you've had uh, two weeks of intense rehearsals. Uh, given the scale of the production, do you think you're confident you've had enough time to do the show justice? Yeah, I mean, we, we did. I mean, we had three days of private rehearsals, just us, you know, getting back into the groove. But, you know, this, it's not like, it's not, it's not Shakespeare. You, you don't get f more depth out of the dead hmm? parrot. You don't get further depths <laughs> out of it. There's not a second there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so as long as you know it, I'm mean, just watching those two perform certain sketches is just a delight, and you don't want them to get bored with it until the audience affected, you know. I think so that that's the point. We've got to be at the point where we're really enjoying ourselves and we really want to do it. If we've got to a stage where, you know, we've done it so often, it's now just a matter of where do we get our marks right, do we, is the technical things sort of taking over. I mean, that, got that's to, been the got learning feel process. It. We've got to feel that it's really funny and we're enjoying it like we did 40, 50 years ago. The audience is going to be an absolutely huge element in this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, Terry and Mike and I once played a, a, a what was it, something to do with Stanley Baker, Great Western? Yes, you know, we how played many, it. How big was that? Pop festival. It was just one of those pop festivals. You didn't know how many people were there. I mean, a whole city. There was 150,000 people stretching off into yeah. the mud, yeah, pre-Glastonbury. And I think that's one of the things that my, our, our promoter, uh, Phil McIntyre, said to me that. He said, yeah, we actually sold more tickets than Glastonbury. <laughs> well, right. really? It's actually impressive, I think, for a bunch but, of But you know, when comedians. you suddenly play to an audience this huge, then the effect that it has on your performance is much bigger than when it's a small audience, obviously. And you've got to hear the laughs, and are they rolling laughs, or is there a big laugh? And we don't know what that's going you to be. You don't know what yeah. that's going to be like, really. So there's going so to have we, to be a lot of adaptation in our performance. Hmm? Yeah, we don't, I mean, we don't know what it's going to be like. That's nothing you can rehearse. Um, so we'll probably get be all over the place. Hello, gentlemen. It's uh, Charlie Gerling from LBC. Um, I don't know if you saw the lovely piece written about you over the weekend by Eddie Izzard. Oh. It's obviously, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there's obviously a lot of people very, very excited to see you again. How are you dealing with the, uh, the pressure of the weight of expectation? 
very badly, <laughs> personally. You've we've been, we've been working, I have, you know, yeah. so it's been, it's been endless. It's been a lot yeah. of hard work. We, you know, we started at, at we were working afternoons and evenings yeah. on the actual stage. And there's, it's very technical, there's a lot of cues, there's a lot of film, there's subtitles and all sorts. So just getting the technique of the show right has been uh, hard in itself, amazing. We put on a musical in two weeks. And so uh, now it just feels like excitement because there's nothing more to be done. We just go out there and, and see I what mean, happens. See what happens, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. I don't thought. feel so nervous, but there's two things. You see, once you get to our age, if people have bought tickets, they, they bought them because they like you. You know, they don't think, well, I can't stand that bunch, so let's buy six tickets. So they're, they're <laughs> pre-selected. It might be, it might be assassins, John. You know, you've got to be careful. <laughs> oh, well, yes, they could be. Well, yes, they could be. Another question? No, nothing personal. Oh, over here? Uh, yeah, a guy with his hand up there. Hi there, Toby Hill from London Live and Evening Standard. Um, Gold and the channel are going to be showing a, a series in the autumn of your best sketches with comedians talking about why they like them so much. Which sketches do you think that those comics will say were the ones that really influenced them the most? Mm, oh, I don't know. You're asking us to guess what they think yeah. will be. There. I don't. I uh, who, ask who, who, you to read lines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mean, yeah. Who yeah. knows? I think when you start, you want to try and make everyone laugh. You know, and you do that for the first 20 years. You really do try to make everyone laugh, yeah. and then you realise it's not possible because people's senses of humour are very subjective, and they're much more subjective than people realize, because if you sit in a group of people, then you're influenced by the infectious nature of uh, laughter. But if you sit on your own and watch things, and you don't, people have a completely different uh, yeah, yeah. A reaction to certain sketches. I remember once discussing Woody Allen, about, this is about 30 years ago, and we were all there, we were all huge Woody Allen fans, and then we started to argue about what was the best film. We all like completely different films. And you know, sort of his favorite yeah. film was the one I thought was awful. So it's all much more subjective than you think. So the interesting thing about the comedians is which ones they choose, because that'll tell you much more and about them. I always think that part of Python's appeal was not just the individual sketches, it was diversity of a whole show, the way it was all put together, the way we, you know, we didn't have to have a tagline because we go straight to Terry Gilliam, do some wonderful animation of Botticelli or something like that. And I think that's something that's quite important about the appeal of Python that lots and lots of stuff in each show, and it's not just the individual sketches, it's the actual mix, which I think is also what's going to be interesting in the, um, the, the O2 show. I mean, it's the mix, really. There will be classics, but it's how they I've all I've got to say together. that re recently I'm surprised at how often I wake up in the morning with one of the tunes uh, going through my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> An earworm, and yeah. often a different one. <laughs> yes. Which is also co-written by John Dupre, who, who yeah. we wrote Spam a lot together, and not the Messiah. I've been working with him for 35 years, and he yeah. makes a wonderful orchestra conductor. John Dupre, so, very important. There's a, an amazing yeah. amount of Python music, actually. It's quite extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. We went Once it's all it. put together, you're really surprised how much yeah. it is. And John Dupre did the music for Fish Called Wander, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. 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 Hello, Mindy Stevenson from Channel 5 News. Question for all the Pythons. Now, I know you said that this is, this is it. Be no other shows. So, if you are planning on retiring, what are your retirement plans, and will they involve any outreach work with parrots? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, retiring I'm, from Python I'm, is not retiring from life, is it? Yeah. Is, it? Yeah. So, yeah. is retiring from Python retiring yeah. from life? life. No, Actually, no, no, it, re not at all. Retiring I, from Python is so we can enjoy exactly. the rest of our life. We've got things to do. I, I, I'd like to do a, a musical film. Um, I'm uh, planning a, a musical which I've written with uh, Jim Steinman. Uh, uh, it's the, based on the Nutcracker Suite, um, the, and he, he's written, uh, um, it, it, uh, um, he, he did the Meatloaf albums, and um, he's written uh, lyrics to the Tchaikovsky tunes. Well, I don't know why anyone hasn't done that before, I mean, and I, uh, I'd like to uh, make Cadbury's a... Cadbury's Fruit and Nut did. Okay, yes. <laughs> I'd like to make a film of that. Um, so uh, I'm d directing it in, uh, uh, in Toronto in uh, 2015. All tickets are available, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> but the general question is, I think we've actually diverged enormously since we did the television uh, series, you know, God knows how many decades ago that was, but we've gone in very, very diff different uh, directions. I mean, Michael does the trap. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Travel programs. <laughs> yes. I'm used to this now. You know, so Gillian is such a director. horrible thing. Eric basically writes masses of songs and musicals. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm just finishing my autobiography. He loves doing weird things. So he did a. What was the thing you did in Lisbon? The opera about vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean evil machines. I, I, I did. A, I wrote it and. Uh, and directed it in Lisbon, so... Um, I, uh, so we're going to go in very different directions, and the reason that we've come back together fairly easily is that we did have a sort of reservoir of known material to start with, because if we'd had to start writing stuff, I think it would have taken three years to get it together. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, the main thing is I don't, we are not retiring. None of us... Well, I don't think we will. We'll just carry on working until we drop. Mm. Um, I have to do some but the big question is, are you working for money? And I'm still paying off the alimony, mm. so I do certain things for money that I wouldn't be doing if I didn't have to earn the alimony. Um, others are freer to do exactly what they want to do, but in a year's time, we'll all be doing exactly what we want to do, and I think there'll be some surprises. Ooh. 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 What do you want to do, John? Ooh. What is the surprise? You well, well, for example, us. one thing which yeah. I suggested yeah. to... Uh, what was the guy who was running ITV? What's his name? Greg Dyke? No, no, no. the... Um, Sorry? <laughs> yeah, Peter Fincham. I suggested I wanted to do a series about religion. I said I wanted to do a series about what religion would be if the churches hadn't fucked it up. Yeah. You said, no, I think that would yeah. be very, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, but of course, <laughs> he just glazed over at yeah. the thought of that. So uh, I'll have yeah. to take that one elsewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Following how, on from How the Churches Hubbard. Fucked It Up. I can see the title there on the front page <laughs> of ITV. Yeah. With Jolly John Cleese. Uh, can we get a microphone to the man with the beard? Then? It's well, boring. Hi, uh, good to see you guys. I'm from Brazil. I started some oh. paper. Excellent. Um, Lucky bastard. <laughs> yeah, that was very good, yeah. So, basically, uh, I have two friends here, they're comedians, and um, oh. they, they, they do, uh, they are very popular in Brazil through the internet, through YouTube, and they have a question for you about technology and uh, com uh, comedy and uh, new technology now in the internet. I'll pass it. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> well, actually, we are this. We have this group on, on YouTube, part of those folders in Brazil. And do you guys follow any new comic, not new comics, not only here or but in, on internet or something like that? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> it become very difficult. I just from just, from, yeah, from generation. Yeah. Bruce uh, yes, uh, and uh, outside internet, maybe, uh, what have you been uh, laughing at uh, lately, like the la la last 30 years, I don't know. Oh, the last 30 years, <laughs> yeah. Eddie, Eddie, Rebecca, Eddie is it? The Rebecca, yeah. Eddie is Rebecca, a, hmm? a Louis C.K.? Yeah, yeah. Louis C.K. That's good. Yeah. I yeah. thought the Rebecca good Brooks child was pretty funny. Yeah. I got, yeah. I got a lot of good yeah. laughs out of that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about making comedy on the internet using this platform? new platform to make comedy and reach more people. Well, obviously, it's, it's great. It's, access it's yeah. accessible. I mean, Would Terry Gilliam it? had to come to England to get into comedy, because yeah. in, in America in those days, there was no funny things on television, not for young people to be involved in. It was all network, and it was only when Saturday Night Live started that young people actually got onto American television and changed the face of television and comedy in America. So. And now cables opened it up wide in America, and then the internet also. And really, all, all that happens is when you're young, you find people who make you laugh, you copy them, and then you learn your own form and become your own that, comedy. Yeah. And that's, that's the same in every art. Artists do that, they copy the people they love, then they find their own photographers. It, it's the same thing, I think we just pass it on. Yeah, it's interesting with the internet there, because when Python started, we were very popular with a few people in America. In 1969 we started, there were already people saying, oh, this is a great show, you should go to America. And for four, it was four years before you eventually were shown in America, just because people wouldn't take a risk on it and the big television companies wouldn't dare show it and all that. Nowadays, I suppose we could have done stuff on the internet and it could have been around the world 
you know, four years earlier, which would be quite, quite, quite a difference, really. I think it's very good that people have a chance to put their work out there, because it used to be controlled by a small number of people. But yeah. as you're asking us, I, I would say that the thing about getting older is that when you're in your 70s, you're not as interested in what's going on as you were when you were in your 30s, because there's other things that you've moved on to, and there isn't room for all of them, you know. Was it always the intention, hello, Michael. Was it always the intention to um, have the last show, the one that's going to be on TV? And are you at all concerned that you might be, to put it frankly, knackered by the time you come to present your wares in front of millions of people around the well, world? Well, we're very lucky because we have 10 days off. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really nice. And then we come back and do two. Five and then off. Five days off. Oh, oh, shit. More than five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ten. Yeah. No, it's more like ten. Sure. Yeah, and then, and then, then we the do two, yeah. and then we have a night off, and then we film the last two for our Blu-ray release in November. And so we should be, you know, the show should be gelling by then. It makes sense to do the last one uh, live. I, when, I, when we thought it was going to be the last one, we thought, well, what a, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to put this on around the world? This is just like a, so it's a world event. So it's on in American television, I mean, films, screens, all, and it's all on over in the Australia world, so, too. Yeah. It's, all, yeah. it's all over Australia, the place. And, and that's really quite exciting. It means you're actually going to say goodbye publicly on one show, and nobody ever has the chance to do that. The Beatles didn't get a last good night. And I think that's rather lovely. I think it's oh. sweet and dear and, and gracious, and I'm very grateful that that's sort of come to be. This that's show is nothing true. like as tiring as doing a one-man show. No. You know, I do about an I hour find. and 50 I find minutes. I'm, much, yeah. more, much more tiring. This is lovely. You go off, you have a chat, you change, you know, put a silly hat on, and you go back on again. It's really quite relaxed. <laughs> what do you do? That's what oh, he's up yeah. to all night. Like wrestling my <laughs> trousers. That's what you do. <laughs> But I think it will give us actually something nice to aim for for the last show. It will give that extra energy to it. Yes, make it will. And very, I'm hoping that we can uh, beam in from these other locations, certainly in the UK, I've been Glasgow, and uh, like, so it's like uh, last night of the proms. You know, you can see all these people in a live cinema mm. actually, think, you know, yeah. feeding it all back into the O2. It should be. Amazing, because they all, yeah. a lot of Python fans like to dress up and come in silly costumes. And that's the one element we don't know. And we have at O2 what we call the dead carpet. And people are allowed to come along on the dead carpet and be interviewed and be photographed. And I think David Walliams is doing that on the last night as well, broadcasting that. So I think it's sort of like a party. I mean, it's like a crazy party, and I, I think that should It'll be It'll be easier on the last night, because we will have had 10 performances with this huge audience, and we'll begin to get some idea around about number six of how to actually play the sketches. Or Olivier used to say, even with his drama, that he used to need half a dozen performances with an audience before he really knew how to do his performance. And if one of us has died, then the rest of us all make more money, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Bearing in mind the audience for that last show will be so vast with it being broadcast around the world. Will you be affected by nerves, do you think? Will you be able to shut it's, out? It's, it's still the too? same show. You go yeah. on, you know, whether you're doing it for one per two uh, people, I, yeah. you still got to know your words, go on and try and be funny as you possibly can be. The, the, yeah. the imaginary millions of other people who yeah. aren't there, it's going to be, you know, there's 15,000 people to make laugh. That's the immediate. Yeah. problem yeah. and target, and, and then however many there are, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's academic. Yeah. I remember at Saturday Night Live, you used to push open the door, and 30 million people would be looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> so you, right. yeah. But you couldn't really still think the, about that. Yeah. It couldn't affect the way you were doing it. That would be crazy. We've just got to make sure we do it really well, each show, buckle down. And we all we work together. We're pretty good together. We kind of keep each other's standards up, I would say, you know, about... No, no slacking, we all work hard, and, and that's all you can do. Forget whether it's 50 million or 500 or whatever. In fact, sometimes I think performing to 300 people in a room where you can see them all, you know, it's just as difficult as doing 15,000 where you can't see anybody anyway. That uh, for the first time you are going to, to put in a stage live, uh, nobody is expected the Spanish Inquisition, so if have you got more details about a specific sketch, if have you got a guess, I'm more than happy to hear here. And the second one is, um, obviously one thing is to um, announce a show, a show sorry, uh, to be gathered for, for just once, 
but um, how did you receive uh, the news that you have uh, to extend the show? How is the life um, behind the stage? Have uh, you got time to catch up things? Um, I mean, how is the, the, the life together? This is just business or this is um, a meeting for, for my friends? And by the way, I was one of the million of person who try to buy your tickets for tomorrow yeah. um, after hundreds and hundreds of times that my um, uh, boyfriend made me to watch the life of Brian, I have to admit that I can like you. Um, <laughs> 500 times it took, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, uh, it was impossible for these uh, 40 seconds, but um, I uh, made you an invitation. Um, if you read my article and if you like what uh, you can read, I'm more than happy to accept two tickets for tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was it, yes. I think okay. we're all friends, really. I mean, uh, we, you know, we get on together well. And, um, That's why uh, we don't see an enormous amount of each other, um, normally. And when we get together, we have a very good time. Somebody once said we laugh more when we're together than we do at any other time, and that's yeah. true. I mean, the best, uh, I mean, it's best when we're performing, really. That's what we, why we originally got together. We love the comedy. We like writing. We play together well. That's, that's the most enjoyable thing about doing this show, really. Yeah. And I think we've got to give uh, Eric a big hand yes, for, yes. Um, yes. for directing the it's show. Got a small and, um, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's very impressive. <laughs> he, was, he was prepared to take that over, <laughs> and it was absolutely marvellous that he did, because he yeah. exa it was exactly the experience he'd had with Spamalot that we needed to make yeah, this no, show. It's, it's turned it into no, it a show. A fun, it was a fun gig. I mean, uh, you know, just to, to be given a job to imagine what you could do for the last time Python comes out publicly. It's a lovely, it was a, been a lovely 10 months actually, and I've got Arlene Phillips and a big crew, and then we just imagined big, with great sets, and it's just been, a, you know, just pushing this huge tanker forward, and here we are now. Uh, we see if it floats or Going it goes straight down. towards the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, the only reason that rehearsals have been tiring is that it's so uh, complicated, the show, and so technical that one has to spend much more time actually re rehearsing the changes between scenes than you actually spend uh, rehearsing the scenes themselves. Yeah, I, like to, I like to think of it as a pre posthumous memorial service with all the dancing and joy that one would hope at a, at a funeral. Oh. Pre posthumous. Pre posthumous, yes. Concept. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, catchy, I guess that's a complicated catchy. word, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Preposterous, I think. No, 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 my no, 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 We're playing okay. on the word preposterous. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes, that's how it works. Have you got any details that you can uh, announce today about the, the sketch of the Spanish Inquisition that is going to be performance for the first time on the stage? Well, actual it, fire this time, it actual will be, fire, yeah. burnings, yeah, it's going to happen. Death yeah, will occur this time. Yeah, it's about time. People have been begging for that for years, to bring it back <laughs> like it was in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition um, from the third row. Hi, I'm from uh, Total TV Guide magazine. If I can ask two questions, please. The first is, that uh, why did you decide you want the last ever show to be screened on gold rather than the BBC, which is what people might have assumed you would have gone for. Why doesn't the Probably BBC money. put out Python? They own it in this country, <coughs> don't they? Like, no, they don't own it. They have the, li the rights. Yeah. They have the rights. Why they, they have the terrestrial them? rights mm. uh, exclusively, yeah. and they haven't put us out for ages. It's a business I, question. I don't know if that was yeah. part of the process, because to be perfectly honest, um, somebody else makes these kind yeah. of decisions. And and somebody else is Jim Beach, us. who very kindly came in and, and helped manage us and sorted this whole thing out, proposed the show. He's the manager of Queen. And he knows, you know, he was previously uh, Jim Beach, a lawyer at Harbottle and Lewis, and he's a wonderful man, and he's been a great guide and mentor for us over the last year, and it's been fantastic. He was and in the footlights with Eric. Yeah, he used to play piano for us in the footlights. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he does such a wonderful job with, with Queen, and uh, Phil McIntyre is our promoter. who They work together. Oh, and I think we will rock you. They put it on. Phil has the commitments on, and he's done every major comedian in in, in England. So we, you know, we tended to leave business decisions to them because that's what they do, and we've just sort of made artistic and you know comedy choices. And the other thing is, 
one sense is the fans are going to love this and the reception okay. will be amazing. Will you care what the critics say, though? No. no, no. Well, I yeah. shall carry on a little bit. Reading it's too late. The ones We're I finished. Used. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. there's no, <laughs> criticism you know, is usually too late. It's, it doesn't yeah. help you. You, you. you know. So it's, they not, don't really, it's not really for you anyway. Yeah. It's for their affect, readers. They don't affect the, the, the success of the show at all. And I couldn't name one. I literally couldn't. I think they'll all look at it because there's been so much pre-publicity. People talking about the Pythons and getting together. And I'm sure there'll be people saying unkind things as well as kind things. Yeah, yeah, that's just inevitable. I mean, you've got to keep, um, you know, s sort of keep your own focus and, and not read all this stuff. Uh, only good bits, anyway. Um, and I think that's the way we'll we'll deal with it. But I'm sure critics will will come in and want to say something. But they're not they're not the funny ones who are doing the show, really. They're, they're critics. From ITV News. We've heard a lot of uh, artists and writers comment on this, and you did a lot of your filming for Monty Python and the Holy Grail up in Scotland. Would you like the UK to stay together as one country? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I think there should be a separate Python Republic exactly. yeah, <laughs> voted on by those. We get 15,000 people at least. I have a five point peace plan for Syria, if you'd like to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's point one? <laughs> I think the Scots should do exactly what they want to do. Yes. Yeah, in Syria. Or yeah. is this <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what are we doing here, Jimmy? Oh, Aleppo. Aleppo? No, Aleppo. Yeah. <laughs> Where else we go? Mode ADs from ZDF German Television. You're being shown in 60 venues across Germany. Can you account for why you're so popular in Germany? And secondly, is there not any amount of money that would induce you to get together again? Despite their <laughs> reputation, the Germans have a sense of humour. Uh, yes. And we made two films yeah. in Germany, actually, for Austrian television. And some of the footage that we're using, like the Philosopher's Football match, is actually shot in Germany on the old Bayern München ground before they moved to the Olympic Stadium. So we yeah. we had I, a lot I, of great times in. in I had to in learn Germany. lumberjack song in German, you know, and I don't know a lot of German. But when Germans congregated together, I said, "You speak it, you 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 Brits, you never learn German." I just said, "Oh, fellow boy, es mein Brot," and sing the first verse of lumberjack song, and that usually shuts them up. <laughs> we were brought up with the idea that the Germans had no sense of humour, and I have to say, I've been to Germany quite a lot. I have no idea how this started. It was probably true at one stage. But um, the, the German sense of humor seems to be really quite close to us. I think the big difference seems to be between northern Protestant Europe and southern Catholic Europe. I mean, we're all very well known and, and, uh, and recognized in, in, in places like Scandinavia, Holland to some extent, Belgium, and then Germany and Austria and places like that, much less so in Italy and Spain and um, in France until recently. I mean, the only yeah. time anyone ever really paid attention to us in, in, in Spain was when Life of Brian ran there mm. in Madrid in one cinema for over a year. So there seems to be, if you look at where the BBC programs are sold, it tends to be Northern Protestant yeah. Europe, if you want to sort of draw a wiggly line. I think what was wonderful with Life of Brian, it came out right after the fall of Franco. So there was this just Lost, and they wanted it so badly what Python was doing, and it was a huge effect in Spain. But also, you know, one of our first big sales was to Yugoslavia when there was a Yugoslavia, and the people there, because uh, Tito had sort of what, hadn't censored any television coming in, and people sort of badge of courage to watch Monty Python because you could see us sending up our establishment. That was a way of people there saying that uh, what they felt about the establishment of, of Tito's Yugoslavia. So it was an odd that you get a country like that that buys a show almost, and, and it works for political reasons as much as for comedy. Mike Doherty from the National Post in Canada. Um, I'm wondering if, when you were going through the Python back catalog to devise the show, did you find that there was some material that you initially wanted to do, but maybe you discovered that it wouldn't have worked as well now as it did in the 70s, or did you find that it was all timeless? It's a lot of it, it's mainly timeless actually, because we were very fortunate, we followed a satire boom in England and everything was topical. So when we came on, we tried to do not that. So our humor is, tends to be uh, just general types, 
and funny things rather than yeah. particular. And so it doesn't date as fast as satire. And we've been fortunate in that. Um, I guess that. Well, I think, is there anything uh, that certain, we, I mean, we, there's certain, there's not yeah, we had really to, that much you, that, that has fallen out, really. We had to choose things that you could perform. I mean, there's nice bits of film, Knights of Knee or something like that, but, you know, that would have been very, that's got to be seen within the context of the film. So we had to choose material which would do well on stage. But apart from the silly waltz, which I couldn't do because of my various uh, operations, I, I can't think of a single thing that was dropped because it was not felt to work anymore, which is mm -hmm. odd, and it hadn't occurred to me to you ask the question. Yeah. Okay. Lady in the front. It also occurs to me that when we do the show on the, on the 20th, our very last show will be the first live show we've ever done on television. Mm. Yes. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Now I am nervous. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Tony Vazamo from yeah. Finnish newspaper, Helsinki uh, yeah. Sanomat. Yeah. Um, we saw the Finnish flags uh, in the taste, uh, so am I right in assuming that we will hear the Finland song? And why Finland? Uh, how do you feel about Finland? Finland, Finland, it's Finland, Michael's song. the country I quite Michael want to Finland. be. Your mountains song. are lofty, your treetops are tall. Finland, 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 Finland has it all. You're so sadly <laughs> neglected and often ignored. A poor second to Belgium when going abroad. That was it. <laughs> it's, it also fits in that. nicely with the Viking theme, who also yeah. like spam. So it's sort of um, pushing things together that have sort of vague themes in common. So Look. that's why they suddenly sing Finland. Yeah. And it's a great it's, song. It's, it's a beautiful tune. Michael yeah. wrote the tune too, I think. No, I don't think I wrote the tune. I don't no, do no, tunes. Okay. But anyway, Finland, it's, it's a lovely country. I've been there and I've enjoyed Helsinki a lot, but it's kind of not one of those countries people hear about very much. So I think to do a, devote a song to Finland is rather, rather nice. It's recognizing a quiet, modest country. It's not is a quiet, quiet, modest country, it? Mike. It's a country of imagination. That's what I find extraordinary about Finland. I remember going to the, there's a, a summer, um, um, film festival above the Arctic Circle, and a special train was put on with all the people going to it. And they kept talking about the mountains of Finland, where you could see across Europe. And as you get there, all you discover is the trees get smaller, the hills yeah. don't get bigger. Yeah. But by, but we finally walked up this hill where at a ski lift, and luckily the clouds came in at that very moment, so the view was blocked. Yeah. So we had to imagine everything. It's an extraordinary country. So long. Yeah, I wasn't saying it wasn't extraordinary. Oh, when I on, said modest, you you it's modest, it imaginative, <laughs> extraordinary, the trees get smaller, which is a difficult thing to do. <laughs> Man has to go around clipping them, you know, months at a time. Least surprising revelation, Michael Palin's been to Finland. Oh, he yes, 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 it is strange. Yeah, um, yeah. Final I question, I think we'll have to be from the Norwegian Broadcasting. We don't have an ending here. Um, you always talk about, uh, a bit about being old and doing this. So how have you prepared physically before this marathon? I've not been <coughs> drinking uh, for a week. <laughs> that's really Ooh, that's quite I've a, been uh, yeah. hiking for three months and running up and down hills, and because uh, I know that stamina is the one thing that you can't fake, uh, and uh, <laughs> so I've been sort of preparing myself physically just to be able to do it for ten yeah. nights and to be able to sing and and you know. But Get Eric's has a much, much bigger burden than because when the show finishes, he stays on and does the technical notes with CJ, <laughs> and um, we go home. So I'm, I'm, I prepared for it by sleeping more. <laughs> you prepared, uh, yeah. more, you prepared no. for it by directing an opera, right? Yeah, I thought that was really the way to do it. You know, <laughs> sit there and give directions to other people, and then, and then you're ready to go on stage, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So no Mick Jagger routines? No. Well, no. what do you mean? Mike's in good shape. What do you mean? No, Mike's I, in good shape. I'm <laughs> a punishing schedule, lying down and watching television. No, I, I sort of try and keep fit, but when I travel, on my travel, oh, I always, you know, find you've got to be... I, I've learned to keep, keep fit, and I prefer to be in reasonably good shape, um, so that's what I do. I'm from Ynet News, but I'm also former head of the Israeli Monty Python fan site. And, uh -huh. uh, uh, so I actually have a few questions. But, but uh -oh. I, uh, okay, we'll start by that. Um, according to the sneak previews that you posted online and the 
speculations among the fans, it seems that the show would include some of your naughtier sketches, including Sit on My Face and the Camp Judges. Of course. Um, so uh, in, the, in these two, you end up with very few clothes on. Um, so uh, were there any hesitations before? Uh, <laughs> we, not, we, we, days or? We, 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 have, we no, end up we with an shameless, awful lot <laughs> Totally shameless. We end up with an awful lot of clothes on. They just and happen we, to be women's underwear. <laughs> And luckily, we have ten girls in Argent Provocateur, which is, tends to clear the palate a little once we've been on. <laughs> <laughs> An amused bouche. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, he's got one yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is the silver uh, question. Uh, before, before the, uh, the Flying Circus, uh, uh, the three of you made a lovely TV special called How to Irritate People. Oh, yes. And uh, I wondered um, if. John, Michael, and Graham, who created and participated in this, um, were more irritating during the work than the others. What is the most irritating habit that each of you have while working together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he lit the fire, didn't he? Yeah, this is <laughs> really it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, really. Not, not, they're not terribly irritating when we're working together. I mean, occasionally we'll invent a new line that wasn't in it before. Um, that's, that's good, that's creative. <laughs> <laughs> you said that when you were in an interesting country, we would have all been watching, Mike. <laughs> that wasn't the golden question. No, that wasn't <laughs> the golden question. <laughs> that was rather a leaden question. Yeah. I, I should mention, because I know you're all keen to know what this is, but this bit of um, architecture back there actually is a photograph I took in Jaffa in Israel, just to let you know, the Israeli audience know that they're included. These are other wonderful things. What are so c can I ask a, a couple of final questions? Terry, how much have you been involved, Terry Gilliam, how much have you been involved in, in the look of the show? Because you were responsible for the animations and a lot of the extraordinary image from, from the I, original I'm basically, uh, I put on a lot of difficult costumes and makeup and then walk out and then thrown off the stage almost immediately. <laughs> That's my job, basically. <laughs> job? <laughs> job. It's a pleasure. Yes, it is. She's the sort of Harpo of Python, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's very, very funny and very strange. And, 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 Extremely and, strange. And, and what I do works in all languages. Yeah. <laughs> Except English. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did design the set, didn't you? You, you did design well, the set. Well, no, no. Not Ri really. No, Rick Lipson is the designer of the, the set using my stuff no, brilliantly. I mean, they, they gave us a big modern set, and it was very, it looked like a rock show. And, it was, and I said, well, just Gilliamize it and they knew exactly what I meant. They came back with this rather beautiful, it's like a Victorian cutout with Terry Gilliam's stuff all over the place, using all his imagery. And it, it's rather comfortable and warm to be, to be in. It's like a 19th century mad place. Uh, and that, that's, yeah. that's, it's all inspired by Terry, and, but it's done by Rick Lipson of Stewfish. Mm. And, and Eric, in the stage show, uh, Spamalot, which you, you brought back recently, you continually put in new jokes. What's it been like trying to think of new ideas for, for, for some of the older sketches? Have you, have you adapted them in any way? We've had little, yeah, we've had little titans and new slight lines and things. Yes, there's certainly been that. And it's fun to think of a new line now and again and put, put things in if it occurs to you. Um, and, you know, we've got a few, we had a very nice filmed gag with Stephen Hawking, as I said before. Um, that's very nice. And Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox. Um, it's so also you know, it's a huge, huge surprises still. It's a huge stage, you know, that we're performing on. So a lot of the sketches sort of expanded a little bit to use the, the scale and the space. It's rather nice, really, because we're used to making performing in sort of television-sized spaces. It's tiny. I this think we could go is on. Actually, very tiny. That's what's very odd sitting here. It's like a little chamber yeah. piece we're doing here. And the stage we're on is massive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. massive. By the way. I think some people are, were asking whether there are any tickets still available because there aren't many. But I am told that because there are camera positions that we uh, thought would be used and technical positions, there's fewer of those now. So actually there are, there are tickets those uh, are being my released. Those are they're my not being released till like. 6 o'clock tonight. Are they? Do we have Phil being here? Released because I was concerned tonight. that you would not, uh, the lady there, the Spanish lady, had not been able to uh, get, uh, get tickets. Uh, do, is, is there anyone here like Phil McIntyre who could just explain what the situation is? There's somebody here? very like Phil, Phil McIntyre. Phil, the back there. Shout out to Phil. Phil McIntyre. Yeah. He's going to deal with it. Okay. Yes. Okay. We all want tickets. Thank you. So there are some available you, from 6 o'clock tonight. Is that right? We're released, released camera, camera position, position tickets. Can you, yeah. it, 
could speak into the microphone, Sorry. Phil. It's on. Uh, yeah, we know uh, we've got the setup at the O2, so we know what is a sight line and what isn't a sight line, and uh, we know um, which camera positions we're going to use. So there are about 600 tickets a night going to go on sale at 6 o'clock this afternoon. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. 600 a night. Than before because we didn't know until we put the setup uh -huh. would be an obscure view of what wouldn't. So. Wow. Good. It's been a bit confusing, I find, because people have told me that the, per the tickets Sorry, are very, very really expensive, and then I keep hearing uh, that we, we just put another lot. So I, I think most of us don't really know. Phil's the guy who can, uh, who can fill things, who can fill you in. No, the tickets from £27.50 to £95 available. And on that bombshell? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we England will win the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I miss something? Oh, great country. I hope you win the World Cup. You know, there's nice spirit. No, I just think the whole World Cup, the spirit of, of the country, the host country always affects the World Cup. And Brazil's affected it very nicely because it seems to be light and fun and everyone's having a good time. And Latin American teams with their sort of flair seem to be doing rather well. And I like that. Okay, I think these lovely men would love to talk to you uh, for the rest of the day, but uh, we have run out of time, I'm afraid. So thank you so much for thank your you questions. Much, I hope everybody, everybody. got exactly what they wanted. There will be. A